Welcome to another weekly news update. Uh, Going to be talking a lot about student loans on this one because we've gotten a lot of big news over the last week or two in terms of repayment. It's going to really highlight like why you guys need to get help now. Basically, the whole repayment thing, the repayment freeze for parents is going to be ending. And so start planning now. And I'm going to go through why that is, what the update has been this week. Um, before I do that, if you're listening on the podcast, be sure to, to subscribe uh, to the podcast so that way you're notified when the new ones come out. If you're watching this update on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Leave some comments if you want to. Uh, it helps us grow. It helps you get notified when new stuff comes out. So be sure to do that. Uh, it helps everybody involved. We're going to be talking about student loans, some stuff about the stock market, uh, some stuff about the housing market all on this uh, update today, uh, just like we do every week. Um, but like I said, the highlight of this is going to be student loans. So as I mentioned, this is why it's like you can't wait now because if we wait, stuff can get blown up. Okay, so I'm going to go through some stuff today. I'm not going to go through all of it, okay, because there's two or three massive pieces. I touched on one last week. I'll, I'll re review that also. So in case you missed it last week, I'll review the new news that came out this week. And then actually next week, there's a bigger piece that. Uh, or I just say bigger, but a very important piece that it, I wanted to do like a standalone podcast uh, and video about because it's such a big impact to your financial plan. Okay, but I'm going to go through the big news this week that has come out. Uh, first of all, the COVID emergency. How did this stuff all happen? And I'm going to go back in time. Um, because in order to understand the importance of what was announced this week, or you, you, you got to understand how we ended up in this forbearance of student loans to begin with. Okay. Um, it all started with COVID, obviously. That's why they call it COVID forbearance, right? Um, but what happened in March 2020 is that Congress passed the CARES Act. Okay. And the CARES Act did a number of different things. It gave it declared like an emergency powers to the president. That's one of the big things that we're going to be talking about. Um, but it also put it into forbearance um, student loan payments through September of 2020. Okay. Now, in September of 2020, they were supposed to enter repayment again. And President Trump didn't want that to hit right before the election because he knew that it would be fodder for Democrats and all that type of stuff. So he didn't want that to hit right before the election because he knew that it would really harm his chances of getting reelected. Okay. Now, <clears throat> because of that, he knew that Congress had only done it through September. And so instead, he enacted what's called the HEROES Act which was passed after 9-11 that gave the, the president certain powers if there was a national emergency. And since this was a national emergency, he used it to extend it. Now, at that time, Nancy Pelosi was ran the House, and there was a, a, a brief news cycle that had come out that said that she was going to potentially, through the House, place a lawsuit uh, against the president saying that he did not have the power to do that. Now, obviously, that never came to fruition. Why? Again, it had to do with the election, right? Like, the Democrats didn't want to look bad. Like, they were forcing Trump to, to stop this. So they kind of held back and said, well, okay, go ahead and let them extend it. Well, that set the precedent that when Biden became president, that he could just keep extending it and keep extending it and keep extending it. So I think he's extended it something like seven times now or seven, eight times, something ridiculous like that. OK, now, again, they're able to do that technically because in the Heroes Act, they technically can do it. Again, it's loose interpretation of the rules, but that's what happened in September of 2020. So that's what we've been rolling with ever since then. OK, so why? what's the big news that came out? OK, the House of Representatives have put together a bill. A bill to immediately end the COVID national emergency. Therefore, all these powers that the president was given, they all get revoked immediately, okay? Now, if that were to happen the way we interpret it, 
is that student loans would be automatically put into repayment immediately, basically overnight. Okay. Now, will that bill pass? I would say it's a low likelihood, but here's where it kind of gets iffy. Okay. The House will pass it. The Senate basically voted on the same bill last year and 62 senators voted for it. That means that 12 senators, Democrat senators, voted to end the emergency COVID powers that the the president was given. However, Nancy Pelosi wouldn't bring it to a floor vote or to a vote in the House of Representatives. So therefore, it was never even voted on. So now it's like, okay, well, the House is going to pass it. it the, the Senate could probably, those 12 Democrat senators are still there, so they, they would probably pass it. Maybe if it gets brought up on the floor of the Senate, they might pull up a whole thing like Nancy Pelosi did where they don't even vote on it. So that's a possibility. But if they pass, both pass it, now Biden has to go in and veto it. Okay. So how, how popular would that be? Would he veto it? I don't know. These are all what ifs that we don't know about. Okay. Now, but here's the big deal. After the House came out and said that, that they were going to try to do this bill, President Biden came out thinking that it would, you know, somehow, I don't, I don't know, whatever they're trying to do. Basically, what he was saying in the news was the Republicans are irresponsible. They're irresponsible. You can't just cut this stuff overnight like that. And with student loans, that's one story, but it also has stuff to do with like Medicare, Medicaid, and, and some other stuff too. But I'm not here to argue, like, you know, do it overnight or not, whatever, whatever. That's what Biden was saying. It was, it's irresponsible of Republicans to do this. Therefore, we're going to end this on May 11th, period. So Republicans, you don't need to do this bill because we're going to end it on May 11th. So the way the student loan industry interpreted that was student loan repayments starting May 11th, which means the first payment would be in June or July. For everybody, period. It doesn't matter what happens with the Supreme Court, with 10K and forgiveness, whatever. It's just, boom, that day it starts. So that was the news cycle for one day. And now the Biden administration has come out and said, oh, well, we don't need the national emergency to extend the student loan forbearance on payments. And that has raised some eyebrows because it's like, what are you talking about? Now, they haven't pointed to any specific law or anything like that, but every legal person I've read, every legal person I've spoken to are all, there's no shot that they could extend this without this national emergency. It was already on kind of like this thin ice. Could they do this or not through the Heroes Act? But they kind of let it slide. Cause like I told you about in September, President Trump did it. So everybody kind of just let it slide, you know, that type of thing. But now it's like, no, 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 you can't extend this. Why is this such a big deal for you and your financial plan? First of all, the first thing this tells us, student loan repayments kicking in this year. Okay, there is no more, like, I'm like 90% certain. I've been saying I don't think it's going to go in as long as Biden's president. But I'm like 90% certain because of the way they're talking that as of today, it's going to go back in. Now, they may, President Biden may try to extend it without the COVID emergency declaration and he might try to do that, and then they get sued by the House of Representatives. All this type of stuff could happen, and it, so it could get pushed out more. But for you, you need to anticipate this is going to happen this year, and there's a chance that it's going to happen before September, like what we thought that it was going to potentially be, that it might be in May, and so your payments might be due in June or July, and it might be sooner than that, potentially. I, I give that a little sliver of a chance of happening. But as of right now, it's like, hey, May 11th, that, that's, I'm entering repayment. And so you need to start figuring out how this stuff plays a role in all your financial planning and start gearing up for that now. And so that way you know what you're doing with prepayments if you're paying off your loan. So that way you know what you're going on with like IDR, what you need to do, all that type of stuff. That's the key thing. And that's one of the reasons why like we've been saying, make sure you sign up at Fitbucks our premium membership, we can walk you through like what you should be doing with your plan and all that type of stuff. So that way you know exactly what to do 
and we can even help you with your loan servicer. So that way you don't have to call. We can go on the, on the website with you, make sure you're going to studentaid.gov, filling out the information correctly. Um, we're going to release a technology where you can make payments straight from Fitbook. So you don't have to go on the loan servicer's website. Okay. Um, so shameless plug, go sign up. We can help you do all this stuff. Okay. But you can't wait anymore. Basically, the, the deadline to wait, it, it's it's there. And if you keep waiting and try to deal with the loan service, it's going to be a mess. Start planning now because regardless of what happens, student loan payment is going to kick in. Okay, like start figuring this stuff out now. Now, the, I'm gonna, I told you I'd revise what I was talking about last week because this is, again, a big, 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 big deal. Okay. Repay, President Biden has changed the way repay is going to be. It's in this comment period right now. And from what we've seen, this change, like 50% of the people that, that I've spoken to, they should be staying on pay as you earn. About 50% should be going on to, on this new repay thing. And we've seen people that have to go into repay that it's actually going to really hurt. Okay, And that's going to be a topic for like next week on, on the podcast next week. Okay. Bottom line is, <laughs> if you didn't know this already, like once this thing goes into play, which is going to be in July... If you're not already in repayment, you will not be able to go on to pay as you earn anymore. Like you have to be on pay as you earn before this new repay version kicks back in. And so all of you that are thinking about going on an income germ repayment plan, and if you took loans out between 2007 and 2014, any federal loans, I don't care if you pay them off or not, like any of that stuff. If you took out federal loans between 2007 and 2014, you need to make the choice now. So that way, you know, by April or May, regardless of if student loans are kicked back in or not, if you need to go on pay as you earn, you need to be on that plan and having the paperwork filed by April or May. And guess what? The clock's ticking. Okay, that's about two months away. You know that now. Okay, so that was the announcement that came out last week. So again, if you guys haven't scheduled a call with us, make sure to sign up, become a member, schedule a call because we can do that analytics for you to see which one makes sense, which one doesn't, and then go from there. Okay. So that is a student loan announcement. Like I said, you guys will definitely want to subscribe or make sure you keep an eye out on this because next week or the next podcast that I release, there's a massive ramification about what Joe Biden just did with revised pay as you are. And it's so big that I, I don't want to put it in a weekly update. I, I'm, I'm doing it. It's its own podcast, probably about 10 to 15 minute podcast because it has massive ramifications to your financial plan and what you need to do so you don't get screwed in the long run, okay? If you're going on pays you earn and repay and all these different things, massive implications. So make sure that, you know, your market reach out to us and say, hey, did the new podcast come out for that one? Because like I said, I'm hoping to put it out by the end of next week, which today is, uh, what's today? February 2nd. So like next week by next Thursday or next Friday, we should be putting that next one out. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. On the stock market, Everything's been doing great, right? Since January. Um, you guys know that all of last year basically was saying the stock market is going down. We did that. It went down 20%. I kept getting asked throughout, you know, towards the end of last year, do I think it's going to keep going down or whatnot? It's hard to say. Um, we've been on a roll since January 1st. I mean, like my wife's 401k that she has has already regained everything that it lost in 2022. So who knows? Nobody knows the answer to that. However, like I've been saying, the numbers are still not necessarily looking good. Like we still have, even though inflation, that's what was the big news this last week, inflation is being tamed. It's still really high and prices are still really high. Consumers are still really squeezed. They're still all time. The, um, the treasury yield that we typically look at to indicate recessions is still inverted. Like that's not a good sign. Like there's a bunch of different things that are there that are not quote unquote good, okay? Um, the markets are pricing in that the Fed's going to be dropping rates towards the end of the year, signaling a recession. Like that's how they combat a recession. Like this first half of the year is going to be fighting inflation. Once they get that down, then they're going to be dropping rates again to, to combat a uh, recession. But that said, if that happens and there's a recession, the stock market is going down, right? So because of that, a lot of quote unquote market experts are saying the stock market is going to go down. Um, by the end of this year. How much is it gonna go down? I, I don't know, is it gonna go up? We don't know. What, what this really symbolizes, what I really wanna highlight though, is over the last quarter, two quarters, okay? Why dollar cost averaging is so important, you know, and why to keep those investments, especially in your retirement, like your Roth IRA and your, your 401k, because those are longer term. Keep 
you know, money going into them because you're, you're investing at those lows. So I made a comment earlier, like my wife's 401k has already rebounded. Same with like her Roth IRAs and stuff is because she kept contributing to them. So contributing down all the way at those bottoms. But not only that, as you guys know, like about our hybrid robo uh, investment advisor, those of you that listen to our podcast on that and have looked into that and, and whatnot, you guys know that when I talk about investments, oftentimes I talk about like dividend and interest paying investments. So that way they can keep investing on your own. So it's not just your money being invested, but it's the dividends and interest being reinvested. So like I said, I, I had my wife's portfolio set up on that, plus her contributions going into it. And even though like the overall market was down like 20% last year, her 401k was down like 9% and it's already rebounded past that, about a 1% amount above that. Okay, so that's the power of doing these things correctly is that it reduces your risk and allows you to, you know, reducing risk means the ups and downs are smaller and allows you to get into that growth faster. That's part of dollar cost averaging. That's also a part of the way we in invest with our hybrid uh, investment uh, robo advisor. If you guys want to know more information about that, just it's on the website. Um, if you guys need to like deposit, do like a Roth IRA for tax season, all that type of stuff. You guys have a Roth IRA, you want us to help you with that. Again, that's one of the new services that we rolled out uh, towards the end of last year. So we're going to help you guys with all that stuff. Okay. Uh, the last part, that's the stock market, housing market. Uh, rates are starting to drop. They, they're still right around 6%. Like when I did the, the update last week, it was still around 6%. They went down a little bit, like 0.125%, like something like that. So mortgage lenders are all happy because like in the lending world, like that's a big, big, big deal. Um, okay. Um, as I said in my last podcast, the last video, if you guys had, didn't see it, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the notes and everything where I, I updated the valuation. So those of you that didn't, don't follow us or you guys might've missed it. Last, I think September, I did a, what we call a back of the napkin valuation saying how far do I think housing prices would go down. And at that time, I said that they would probably go down about 30 to 50% from the highs in my area. Again, this is my area. And I went through how to do that in your area, like the mathematics behind it to do it very quickly, okay? Um, I did an update on that last week. Um, so basically I still think they would go down, but it's going to go down about 25 to 35% from the high because the interest rates decreasing. Okay. So 25 to 35%, like the area that I live in is already down 17%. Okay. So it still has room in my opinion to drop again. That might change if interest rates keep going down on mortgages, they might be properly priced. The bigger news here for you is that they've dropped enough, in my opinion, where like if you're thinking about buying a house, why not start putting in offers? And I'll give you an example. Like I told you in, the, in my area, they've dropped about 17%, but I think they can go down to like 25 to 30%. So let's just say I think that they can probably drop another 10%. I just, I'm just using this as an example. So if there's a home price for like $400,000, I don't need to be like, hmm, well, I think it's gonna be dropped to 360. So I'm gonna wait because again, 10% of 400 would be 40,000. So I think a proper price would be 360. So I'm gonna wait for them to drop. You don't need to do that in my opinion. Like you could start doing other things right now. Like you could say, hey, that house is 400. That's what they listed it for. But I'm gonna tell my agent, let's put in an offer at 360. See what they take it. They might counter back with 370, 380. Great, fantastic. You just got a long-term house that you're gonna live in there for a long, long time. You bought it at a good price. So the, where, where I'm shifting my real estate, quote unquote, outlook on compared to like last year was like last year in September when I did that, I was like, I'm doing this because I want to anticipate where I need to start buying in for the drop. I ain't touching anything right now. Nothing. Now it's like, okay, I still think it has room to go down, but I think I can start buying at that amount right now. I don't have to wait anymore. I can potentially start buying things. So if you guys are looking, you know, potentially buying a house this year or whatnot, you know, start looking and start saying, hey, what do I need to look at? Now, also we have mortgage lenders on the platform now that we partner with, okay? So those of you that don't know, Neo Home Loans, Celebrity Home Loans, and Movement Mortgage. Those companies are our three mortgage lenders. So I, I talk to them all the time. One big thing I do wanna share with you guys, and, and this is one of the big things that I've been seeing, is that like that example I gave you at $400,000 as a house, value that's what it's like put in so you might put in a, a you know a buy offer at 400 seller accepts it whatever appraisals have been coming in low and if appraisals are coming in low you can't get the loan for the full amount 
Okay, so you need to make sure that you're working with a real estate agent that knows what they're doing and what the like an actual price of what a home can get appraised for before you put in an offer and then lose the house because the appraisal came in too low. Or if you're worried about that, make sure that your appraisal, like your real estate agent puts it in the contract that if the appraisal comes in low, you can get back your earnest money and all that type of stuff. So that way you don't lose all that money. Okay, so make sure you, your real estate agent knows what they're doing. Um, so that way you make sure that you don't put yourself in a bad situation, lose some money, potentially lose a house, all that type of stuff. All right, so that's the housing market update, student loan, stock market, housing market. Again, if you guys need help, especially on the housing market stuff, like I just talked about, you know, we have the new points calculators and we have all that stuff that we can help you with. We have the mortgage partner, so become a, a member of Fitbucks. And that is gonna be the weekly update for today. Again, student loans is the big one. I know a lot of you have been waiting. Do not wait, they're going to enter repayment. Start building out your financial plan right now. Use the technology, become a member of Fitbucks. Talking to you soon.